Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today I'm going to discuss why I gave my 13 and 15 year olds their second COVID Pfizer vaccine. The decision to vaccinate is always going to be an intensely personal and individual decision that needs to be made amongst families and their physicians. For our family, and specifically for my adolescent children, we wanted to lessen the need for quarantines after exposure and lessen the use of masks. Although, of course, now the CDC has changed its recommendations on that. Furthermore, my mom has had a bone marrow transplant and has reduced lung capacity. So in order to protect her more, we decided to proceed with full vaccination. Lots of people wanna know about the long-term effects of the vaccine. I have heard that most vaccine side effects in general occur within two months of receiving the shots, although I couldn't find any primary data on that. But this is the time frame that the FDA concentrated on when considering whether the vaccines were safe. However, the children in the original trials will continue to be monitored for two years. Although it is true that very rare side effects may not be picked up within the clinical trials, so longer term monitoring of the safety of the vaccine will continue to track adverse events. But an interesting study that I thought was reassuring, and I'll put a link in the description. This study was published in the Annals of Internal Medicine and looked at safety data from 57 vaccines against infectious diseases approved by the FDA within a 20 year window from 1996 to 2015. They concluded that vaccines were quote, remarkably safe and only one vaccine, RotaShield, for the rotavirus infection, was the only vaccine withdrawn for safety and was recalled less than a year after marketing approval based on safety concerns identified from VAERS reports. And as a reminder, VAERS stands for Vaccine Adverse Effects Reporting System. But what about the risk for myocarditis? As of July 26, 2021, VAERS has received over 1,000 reports of myocarditis or pericarditis among people ages 30 and younger who received the COVID-19 vaccine. Most cases have been reported after the mRNA COVID-19 vaccines, such as Pfizer and Moderna. And the cases are particularly seen in male, adolescents, and young adults. Of these 1,000 reports, the CDC and FDA have confirmed 699 reports of myocarditis or pericarditis. The CDC and its partners are investigating these reports as to whether there is a relationship to COVID-19 vaccination. But I say, okay, so even if there is a link, this side effect is extremely rare. The incidence for myocarditis in young people after the vaccine is about one in 20,000 or one in 50,000 people. But the risk of developing myocarditis from COVID-19 is much higher. A study published in JAMA Cardiology looked at nearly 1,600 college athletes who underwent extensive cardiovascular testing after having COVID-19, and they found that 2.3%, or roughly 1 in 40, had myocarditis after having COVID-19. So for me, the risks of the side effects from COVID outweigh the risks of the side effects from the vaccine. I liked what Paul Offit, who's the director of the Vaccine Education Center and an attending physician in the Division of Infectious Diseases at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia said, quote, there are no risk-free choices. There are just choices that take different risks. The goal of a parent is to make the choice that puts the child at lesser risk. And the vaccine puts the child at lesser risk than not vaccinating the child, knowing that the Delta variant is highly contagious. I couldn't agree more. Now you'll see my 13-year-old son and 15-year-old daughter get their second Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine and hear their side effects and experiences firsthand. Look at your mom. Okay, how did it go? It went good. It kind of hurt going in, but did it feel hurt? Fine. Did it hurt more this time? I think so. I don't really remember the first time though. But no tingling or anything down your arm? No. Okay. All right, we'll check back in with you, okay? Okay.
Oh, it's out? <laughs> I thought it's still in. <laughs> Okay, so you just got your Pfizer vaccine. How do you feel? Uh, the needle's bigger than the other one, so it hurts a lot more. How do you, that was not bigger. I don't know, I just feel, I don't know. Maybe I just don't remember the other one, but that one hurts. And did you have any electric shock sensations like with the first time? No. Okay, all right. I'll check in with you in 12 hours, okay? Okay. Okay, it's been 12 hours since your second Pfizer vaccine. How are you feeling? Good, uh, I can't even tell that I got a shot. Your arm's not even sore? Mm -mm, no. no. Did you have any symptoms today? No. Tiredness, fatigue? No, I, I'm just tired, but, and, but I think I'm just tired in general because it's late at night. Um, show me your arm. Anything, any rash or anything from? Here, I'll pull off the band-aid. I don't see anything. No, it looks good. Okay, no headache? Mm -mm. All right, well, we'll check in with you tomorrow morning, okay? Okay. Okay, it's actually been 24 hours because I left this morning without checking in with you at 12 hours. So let's start with how you felt at 12 hours. How was this morning when you woke up? Um, my arm was really sore, that was about it. Did you have a headache? No. Or a fever? Nope. Did you take any medication this morning? No. Okay. So then let's shift to, it's now been 24 hours and kind of just describe how the day went. Um, I'm really tired. I took a nap and my arm is still pretty sore, but not as bad. And I took some Tylenol. And did you take a nap? You said you took a nap as well, which is really unusual. Can you show me where you got the vaccine? Any bruising or rash or anything? No. Oh, you still have your bandage. Let's take that off. <laughs> okay. So the area looks fine. There's no rash. And do you have a headache right now? No. Okay. What did you take the Tylenol for? Just because your arm hurt you? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for joining me. Okay, Olivia, it's been about 36 hours. How are you feeling now? I feel a lot better, a lot less tired. Um, the only side effects that I have now is my arm is still like a little bit sore. It's not that bad, but my armpit is sore. <laughs> And that started actually last night after we filmed, right? You noticed that your armpit was sore. Mm -hmm. Have you taken any medication for it? Um, last night I took, oh wait, no. This morning I put, I took one Tylenol. Okay. And um, any fevers at night? I don't think so. Any headache? No. And the area that you got your shot still looks okay? No rash or anything? No. Nope. Okay, good. And can you feel a lump under your armpit or does it, is it just sore? It's just sore. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, Will, it's been 36 hours since your second Pfizer COVID vaccine. How did you feel today? I felt great today. Um, I have some soreness in my armpit and whenever I move my arm around, it uh, has a little bit of pain, but besides that, I'm feeling great. Were you especially tired today? Yes, but I think it was just because I was doing a lot of stuff today. And we were moving today, which was why we didn't get to it 24 hours. Uh, do you remember waking up in the middle of the night last night and feeling bad? No, I don't. Have you had a headache? Uh, I had a mild headache, um, but I think it, it was because I wasn't drinking water. Okay, and any rash or anything strange on your arm? I don't think there's any rash. No, no rash. Okay, good. All right. Thank you. Okay, it's been 36 hours since your second Pfizer vaccine. How are you feeling? Um, I feel good. The only thing that's sore now is still my armpit. So your left armpit, right? Mm -hmm. Anything else? Headache? Fatigue? Nope. Did you have to take a nap today? No. You were able to go about your daily business with normal? Yes. Okay, good. All right, thank you. Thanks for joining me.